Okay, on today's episode, I'm going to do an Ask Me Anything, so let's do an Ask Me Anything. Okay, let's get started. We're going to start with Facebook, and then we're going to go on to Twitter. Daniel C. Marsh, what's the best thing about Cebu that you can never compare to any other place? Well, the best thing about Cebu that I can never compare to any other place is the fact that my mom is from Cebu. She is Cebuana, and uh, I guess I'm half Cebuano. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's definitely hometown for me. My home is there in Argao. Uh, that's one thing I can't compare to any other place is the sentimental value that Cebu has attached to me. Did you ever think about stopping vlogging? Uh, so far I haven't thought about stopping vlogging. The, the fact that I don't do it every day particularly, and I, I can kind of control the quality to some extent, uh, but I'd like it to be better of course, but I still have to be consistent. Um, so yeah, I don't think I'm going to stop vlogging, I don't think I'm going to stop creating videos. I really am passionate about it and I love it so much. And it makes me happy doing it, so no, 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 no thoughts of stopping vlogging yet. Aljon Stark, on sa on pag vlog niya, walay wow wow. I guess that's Bisaya and she said, when you vlog, are you not shy? It depends, I mean of course there's moments where you know, your confidence or your, the way you think makes you shy uh, in certain social situations, like anything, uh, you, your mind can always be confident, uh, can always be thinking about vlogging. But again, um, yeah, I mean at the way I vlog as well, it's like, uh, that's my job, that's just what I do, so I don't, I'm not shy about it, you know, I, I just have to do it, so you just do it. But sometimes you get shy, and then I just take b-roll. Okay, so this is from Marty Sofia Mojar. Uh, the advantages and disadvantages of being a YouTuber. One such advantage is the fact that it teaches you discipline because you have to continuously upload. You have to do it on a consistent basis. And again, with the power of habit, over a period of time you get used to uh, moving faster, moving forward, being efficient. Disadvantages, sometimes you don't sleep, sometimes you, uh, you really work a lot. Um, but again, it's your passion that keeps you going and, and you don't really mind even if you like sleep. Um, so yeah, uh, those are the disadvantages uh, at times. Casey Smith, your biggest fear? Um, well, again, the biggest fear for me would be to lose uh, to lose people that are close to me. Father, or your mother, or family sick is is a, is a big fear of mine. Um, your friends too. Any accidents or anything bad that can happen to friends or family is a big fear of mine because it's out of my control. Do you plan on getting married in the near future? Well, uh, that's an interesting question. That was from Franklin El Depitado. Being with someone and having a family is, is a very important role in our lives, I, I believe, uh, in my opinion, not everybody's opinion, but for me, um, marriage is important and, and, and we work for our future marriage. Uh, so yeah, uh, of course I want to get married in the near future and have kids and a family. So yeah, marriage is important, uh, family is important, uh, you know, family, legacy, all of these things are important, so of course I plan on getting married. But it has to be to the right person. Um, again, you know, there's no point in getting married and being with someone that perhaps you may not click. That's why we spend so long finding that one person that perhaps we could spend our long-term companionship with. Okay, so this is from Aya Faruta. I just want to say you make really great content. I mean, where do you learn those incredible camera shots, angles, transitions, of kung ano ano ang paang effect? Do you just experiment some or do you have a reference? Um, again, it's, it's like everything. I mean, when you watch movies, when you watch films, when you watch videos, you pick up... Uh, certain uh, filmmaking styles you pick up at you pick up pick up you pick up editing styles and you know it's about oh, over a long period of time because I've been so passionate about film and, and video for so long again the way I like to see it is you feel a certain way you have an emotion so you have to portray it through the lens through the edit as efficiently as possible to the viewer so that means you have to be very empathetic in the situation that you're at if you feel sadness if you feel love if you feel happiness if you feel adventure and you really feel those emotions when you're on the site where you're shooting. So that's the feeling right there. In terms of the edit, those are things you learn down the road. And of course, there's a the rule of thirds with photography and, and, and shots and, and everything. I mean, strive to be better and you'll get better. Harvey Rara Bastez. Some personal question, Daniel. How are you coping up with your mom's loss? My mom died three years ago, and until now I'm still trying to accept it. Well, Harvey, that's a, that's a, that's a deep question. Again, sorry for your loss, condolences. Um, I think it's around the same time that my mom passed away, uh, which is around three years ago. Again, it's, it's something that's, that's very difficult to deal with, especially a mother. It's funny because when the loss is fresh, and, 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 and you, know, you have the support of, of a lot of people around you, um, you know, you have social support, you have people there to, to, to boost you up and, and, and give you advice. But eventually over a period of time, a long period of time, it gets harder because, well, people would kind of accept that, you know, that it's, it's, it's a long time now. And even for us, you know, your memories of being with that person gets dimmer and dimmer. Um, and that's a very hard thing. There is levels of trauma there also when you lose someone so close that you sometimes get flashbacks, memories of being with them, memories of their pain, their struggles and, and all of that and it's not something you can ever 
take away. You'll never lose the pain of, of losing someone. You'll never get rid of that pain. Um, and that's a good thing. That means you're a good person. But the goal here is to learn from it. You understand they are gone. Practically speaking, they're gone. And what can you do in their memory to honor their memory and, and become a better person in the world for them? Harvey, I'm, I'm sorry for your loss. And you'll never accept it fully, but there's evolution. There's different various forms of evolution of our of the way we handle it. Hopefully we can, we can only do our best, we're human, right? It's never easy losing someone. Harvey, I hope you, I hope that answered your question. It's, it's, uh, it's not easy. What I can say is try to make a difference in the world in whatever little way you can and do it in honor of the people that you've learned from, from the past. Coca-Cola. My Botelia. What's it? Get glass bottle. Plastic na lang? Otang na lang, otang. Mamaya. There you go, Sam. Thanks, Dan. Okay. Hello. Hello, hello, Sam. Question from Dana. Hey, uh, hey Dana. Nah. What okay. inspires you the most? That's a very interesting question, Dana. Uh, Dana just asked, what inspires me the most? Well, the fact that I'm alive and I'm healthy and I'm fit and I, I, I have a loving family and great friends around me and I'm, I'm, I'm contented and happy with my life. Um, and I can go forth and and succeed in it in it in a different way through the YouTube audience, which is what I you know wanted to do from the beginning. But for anybody, for you, for lahat ng tao out there, whatever you find is your passion uh, to keep you going, to keep you striving, and um, just the grind and everything about it. That's that's what inspires me the most. Like for example, I went to the mountain. I went to the Himalayas. Now uh, I'm going to release that documentary very shortly, um, but not yet because it's a special documentary. But during the time I was climbing the mountain, going to Everest, I did not enjoy most of it because it was cold, it was hard, it was miserable. Let's face it, it isn't amazing when you're in minus 20 degrees Celsius up at 7,000 meters. And the point is again, when you're doing it, it's hard, but afterwards you look back on it and you go, at least I achieved something, I did it. So it's, it's the end result. So again, to answer that question, what inspires me is I'm young, there's so much for me to do in my life and I'm excited and pumped to get there, get out there and do it. So Yun, um, accepting the, the hustle, accepting the, the challenge. Dan, you inspire me the most. Oh, thank you, Sam. Precious being precious. Okay. How's your Valentine's Day? Come on, Dan, give us more. We all want to know. Yeah, no, uh, Valentine's Day was a pretty good... I had a great Valentine's Day. Um, yeah. With who? Made a new friend. And, uh, yeah, he's a cool person. <laughs> oh, see, no, yeah. <laughs> Did you ever read Harry Potter? I never watched Harry Potter. I was right. never a Harry Potter fan. I'm sorry. My I question is, what Hogwarts house are you in? What Hogwarts house am I in? What 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 what, what does that mean? Like, is, says, I know you're not a Harry Potter fan, but uh, well, what does that mean if Harry you're Potter. there's a uh, Gryffindor, Gryffindor, Hufflepuff, Slytherin, <laughs> and what's the fourth one? Ravenclaw. <laughs> you obviously watch Harry Potter. Books. You read all the books. I'd be Ravenclaw because it sounds right. cool. Uh, okay, so Gryffindor is like the honourable, loyal guys. I'm Gryffindor. Slytherin is like the snakey. I'm definitely not Slytherdor. <laughs> Ravenclaw is like courageous. I don't know. And then Hufflepuff's like. Hufflepuff? <laughs> is that Hufflepuff? I forgot. It's like Jigglypuff. I, I like think you'll be Slytherin. No, I won't be Slytherin, bro. I think you'll be Ravenclaw. I will be the. What's Ravenclaw? Ravenclaw is like the courageous. I'm Ravenclaw. Next question from Leslie Gabriel How do you keep yourself motivated? on those days that you don't feel like it. As a human being, as a normal person in this world with all these crazy emotions and crazy crap that's happening to you, it's very hard to always stay motivated. Uh, but the trick is just to go out and do what your tasks are. So if you have long-term goals, you, uh, you, you, you list them. And then you have a series of short-term goals that you list throughout the day or the week or whatnot to get to the long-term goals. Uh, when you have that list, uh, and sometimes you're not motivated, but you know it's there, you just get out and do it. So you have to go to the gym, you just go to the gym. You just do the things that you want to do. And even if you don't feel motivated, you force yourself through it and it becomes a habit. The longer you do that, the more you have a habit. And when you have that habit, even if you feel like crap doing it, afterwards you'll always feel good. So um, yeah, it's just about fighting through it and just doing it. Just do it, Nike. Okay, Dan, this question we all want to know. From at Jaria underscore BTST. At Jaria underscore BTST. <coughs> Who's your date? Who is your date? That's Tuesday. Who was your date? Sam dot Louis. You sent me. Oh yeah, go go go. Who was your Valentine's date, Dad? Fuck you. <laughs> 
<laughs> Who's my fan tan? At Bob underscore Vanilla. Okay. Who was your Valentine's? Okay, last question, Dan. Mm -hmm. Alright, this is from at your good and loyal friend. I'm pretty hungry right now. Can you buy me some food for doing all this? You want me to buy you food? Go on, just some gotta. God, dude, it's 200 fucking peso. I could have hired someone else down the road to fucking shoot me. It's like 100 peso. You still owe me 230 peso. I'll pay you that back. I'm you, hungry. You didn't pay me back. You don't have any money. You money, man. <laughs> I'm sick. You're not sick. I just came back from Taipei. It's yeah, you can. <laughs> no, oh, sorry. I'm hungry. First world problems. David yeah. Ocos. Alright. Why, why do you love potatoes so much? Why do I love potato? That's that's not from a that's not a real question, Sam. It's you asking me. Okay, okay. Why do I? I'm Irish. Of course, I love potatoes. Uh, why can't you say the th sounds like thirty-three? Why can't I say the th sounds? Because I'm Irish. We can't say three, 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 three. No, because in Ireland we say, uh, because in Ireland as Irish people who were colonised by the British oppressor, in the Irish language the way we pronounce things, uh, there was no TH, so we couldn't pronounce 333 or... Uh, that wasn't a real question. Fate. Fate. <laughs> you gotta have fate, fate, fate. fate. You gotta have fate, fate, fate. What inspired me to put amazing transitions and effects in my video? Boop, boop, oop. <laughs> um, I don't know, I just... You know, um, I, I just wanted to be different. And I also, I, I didn't want to just vlog because it's what you're passionate about. And I'm passionate about cinematics and telling stories and, and feeling an emotion in the moment. And if I feel that emotion in the moment, and I can portray it through the lens, through the editor, to you guys even better, well then, I've done a good job. So I guess that's the kind of the evolution of that. So that's kind of why I put transitions and effects and cinematics into my vlogs. And I could do better. But the fact that I have to kind of like release consistently, it makes my quality drop a little bit. But I try my best to keep quality high. What's the dong? I try my best to keep the quality high. Okay, last question now. Oh, it's okay. Uh, are you going to buy me McDonald's or Burger King? Stop, Sam, dickhead. I'm not buying you anything, bro. How do you plan out your vlogs? Like, do you plan beforehand the layout and content and everything else? So, uh, how I plan out my vlogs, because vlogs are so consistent and you just do them all the time, it's difficult to always plan it out, but there is times where you plan in certain segments, there's times where you can plan, uh, and then there's times where I don't, and I just wing it, and that, that sometimes happens a lot. Um, yeah, so basically it's 50-50, sometimes I plan, sometimes I don't, due to the spontaneity of a vlog lifestyle. Yon. Okay.